Uh, the Planning Commission had a number of discussions uh, related to these proposed amendments. I have included the minutes of the Planning Commission meeting in your um, packet so that you could see the uh, discussions related to there too. Uh, ultimately, the Planning Commission uh, recommended uh, that uh, these series of text amendments uh, not be approved. And with that, I'll answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you, Mr. Fincham. And uh, although the Planning Commission voted unanimously to not approve this text amendment, by procedure, it still comes to the Board of Supervisors. Yes, sir. It still comes to you for your decision as to how you wish to proceed. Final disposition. And, and we would have the option of sending it back to the Planning Commission for additional review or moving right ahead to public hearing or having a second reading. Yes, sir. Any questions about this particular text amendment? Mr. Taylor. I guess the concern that I've always had is, you know, there's always talk about the groundwater. And, you know, there are only certain areas where it, where it would be feasible. But how does a facility, um, what does that do for, you know, for the, the to enhance the chances of something getting into the groundwater. Because uh, I, I look at us as storing it as opposed to just making use of it. Right? Um, the storage facility, one, would have to meet state regulations. Those regulations um, as would require that it be in a permanent structure that is, an example would be a concrete type structure. It has to be lined um, and it can't you know, has a leachate system where leachate collects. It has to be pumped out um, per DEQ standards. But it's not something that would leach into the ground. There would be a, a permanent uh, base or facility there in which these materials would be temporarily stored. So it would not be open and subject to the weather. What about odor? Odor is always an issue. Um, typically, odor, odor is associated when the product is wet. Okay, we're still going to have those odor issues during the land application process. This this does not address land application of biosolids. That is still regulated by uh, DEQ, and there is no local control over that. The facility, as proposed with the standards, would be a covered facility which is designed to keep rainwater, snow, et cetera, off of the biosolids. Um, and that, combined with the, the separation requirements, um, are designed to address the odor issues for abutting properties as much as possible. That's all right. I don't have any Mr. Chairman, <coughs> Mr. I have a couple. I'm sorry. We started here. That's what confused me. Mr. Akers. Yes. Uh, Mr. Fincher. Yes, sir. Uh, the Planning Commission voted unanimous for denial. Yes, sir. Uh, they had their reasons other than just one of their members uh, was not happy with it and lives evidently in the area of uh, a spot or where one or more of these storage filters would be located. What other reasons did, were discussed in the in the meetings? Number one and number two, is there any, anything that says we cannot stop the process at this point? Do we have do, do we have to go to public hearing? We could send it back to the planning commission for additional review. Well, I'm not. Even, you know what I'm saying is I'm not even asking personally. I'm not asking for additional. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what? I'm not asking for additional review myself. Uh, we could, just, we could conduct a public hearing and never address it. I think there were. We could ask staff to withdraw. Well, Mr. Oh, Mr. Staff Chairman, Mr. let me just go through a couple points, and it okay. doesn't matter to me one way or the other. But let me just. Let's. If, if Mr. I don't. Mr. Are you, Akers, you done? Yeah, I'm pretty much. Okay, we kind of see what you want to do, Mr. Underwood. Your questions, okay, Mr. Seely, go right ahead. 
one of the issues is once upon a time, Caroline County was a no biosolids bio county. They couldn't be spread here. Right. The state stepped in and said, you yes. can no longer say that. That's right. correct. Well, that, that no biosolids position was the Board of Supervisors position, right. right, and you were able to do that right. as a board. Right. My concern is, is that biosolids is getting bigger and bigger. We have an opportunity to pick a storage site and pick the criteria today. We have the ability to make an ordinance that says this is what it takes. Biosolids come here. They can put biosolids on the ground today and leave them there for 60 days in a pile before they spread it. So it gets stored here anyways, on the ground, in the open, in, in the weather, which to me is the worst possible. A storage facility is the safest possible place if you've got to take it to put it. If we don't act, I'm, my, my fear is that not next year or the year after, the state's going to say, you know what, a lot of localities are giving us a hard time. The farming process of when they can put this on, the, the, the window of time is getting narrow and narrow with no-till and crop rotation. Um, so there isn't the time to put it on the ground that they've had in the past. So as that backs up and these facilities with large populations go, hey, we can't get rid of this, we don't want to landfill it, the farmers want it, we have enough acreage in the state to take care of all of our, our biosolids problems and we're not doing it, we're going to get a mandate at some point that says, you all, every locality is going to have to have a, a facility and here's the criteria we're going to set up at the state and it's going to be two or three hundred acres if we're lucky, or smaller, and then we're going to be forced to have them. I'm just trying to be proactive and make it as big a site as we can, get ahead of the curve, and say, here's our site, it's 500 acres, you've got to have these setbacks, it's got to be covered, it's got to be pumped, and it's got to be inspected, and we have the opportunity today to do that, and we may not in the future. I understand nobody wants it, but it's coming anyways, and they're going to dump it on the ground, and it's going to sit, and we're going to have a bigger problem than we've got now. And Mr. Taylor, you're right. You know, what about the runoff? Because that was my, my initial take on the whole thing is, what do we now do? And what we now do is they can dump it. They have 65 days to actually spread it. And they can still do it. We can't stop them. Not having a facility doesn't mean it's not coming. It's coming anyways, because these big localities, they save 40 to 60% of their disposal costs by just spreading it. So they're going to do that because of the cost savings. I mean, I understand wanting to table, I mean, to not do it, but if we don't do something, eventually we're going to be told we have to do something. And I'd rather set the criteria, we know where it can and can't go today, and, and, and when this comes up in the assembly, make sure the language says we're exempt, we've got a standard. I'm just trying to be proactive. It just, it's a philosophy that I think we need to look at. The no biosolids didn't last long couple of years the state said you got to do it you don't have any choice so I'm just looking at this I'm not real wild about it but I know that that eventually we're going to be told and they're going to set the criteria but if we adopt uh, specs for for this for storage, for storage then if the state mandates it and our specs are not in compliance with what that we have to Anyway, so so well, I, I think, think we should wait. The only chance we would have is, is they could say your grandfather because you already have one. I don't know what the odds on that would be. But so, but another person could come in and, and apply that could meet that new standard, and and could apply for a storage facility. Right. So it would be obsolete at that point. I think. Yeah. I if, think we open up a can of worms. If, if just say they're saying here five hundred. Uh, acres. A acres is the minimum requirement. Right. So let's just say for the sake of argument, we made it a thousand acres with all the setbacks and whatever, and then the state went to 500, the next applicant would be 500. Absolutely. So that's the Potentially. only... Potentially. Yeah, that's, I mean, but they would, they would comply, like, like everything else we've ever done, <laughs> they would have to comply with the current sure. state right. law. Mr. Fincham, can we... Re can we do any research on regulations that were set after localities had? Are you aware of any where a locality had set a standard and state law came into play how that was handled? Do you recall any environmental kinds of things? Well, that would be kind of difficult. I mean, 
Go ahead. Go ahead, Ben. Uh, the, the Right to Farm Act and intensified farming, um, a lot of localities um, had, had adopted um, regulations on intensified farming to try to control exactly the sorts of things you're talking about, odor and, you know, having to have uh, those operations uh, buffered really well from the neighbors and that sort of thing. And um, um, we had localities that had those regulations in place and they all went away when the Right to Farm Act was basically was, was um, adopted by the General Assembly. Feed, feedlot, animal feedlots are a good example. Okay. Um, which were covered under the Right to Farm Act. There were a number of localities, uh, particularly in Southside, Virginia, which had regulations related to um, uh, hog farms. Over in the valley, you have uh, turkey farms. On the eastern shore, you have your, your large chicken farms. A lot of localities had regulations trying to deal with these intensive uh, agricultural operations. Um, and Mr. Emerson is correct. Um, a, a certain large producer did not like the fact that a locality did not grant a special exception permit for uh, one of their operations, went to members of the General Assembly, and in part the Right to Farm Act was born, um, thereby relieving localities of their ability to, to regulate those uses except in accordance with um, the, the regulations that were promulgated by the General Assembly. Okay. Yeah, it's that pesky Dillon rule thing that we live under, but, uh, all right. I'm just, the day is coming, is all I'm saying. All right, I'm going I'm to take a liberty. Um, Mr. Broadus, do you use um, biosolids? Okay. And you've got a fairly large farm. You store it on your facility? Okay, so there's no storage on your facility at all. Okay. Well, <laughs> what, what, what would that, what would, what would storing it in that type of facility do for you as far as your farm is concerned? Uh, come on down, Linwood. We were trying to make you a uh, unanimous, I mean, a, an, an anonymous guest, but now Mr. Taylor has forced you to come to the uh, Linwood Broadus, Mattapani District. Um, oh, no, Bowling Green District, excuse me, Mattapani Trail. I know you want to be. I know. I That's know, okay. yes. <laughs> um, Bring the bell across the Bowling Green. The, 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 adva the, the advantage it would do to me, I knew I should have left when everybody else did, but um, <laughs> is, is sometimes the weatherman's wrong and the trucks leave. Northern Virginia, uh, Blue Plains, Maryland, oh my very God. early in the morning. And if we get a thunderstorm at my farm and we get two inches of rain, then they've got 20 trucks they've got to do something with. Uh, the advantage of this facility is they'll just direct them over there and dump them on the concrete. And when they get a chance, they'll come and spread it. What do they do now? Then would, uh, they they run the trucks out there in the mud and they dump them. They, if, if they, they watch the weather forecast carefully, and if, it's, if they can't spread, they do not spread. But if something weird happens, if it rains, they're, they're kind of stuck. And they're dumping. And, and the, I mean, they've got to do something with it. The truck's on the road. And that's when the perfume smell comes. Well, you kind of get that anyway. Rain. But, yeah. but a farm, you're kind of between the pigs, the cows, the chickens. You, you get don't that notice. anyway. Okay. It's kind of it's kind of the joy of living in a rural area. <laughs> it's perfume. Right. Yes, it's springtime. It smells like green here. money, right? <laughs> yes, sir. It smells like money. It smells like food to me. That's all I care about. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Broaddus, we do thank you for um, stepping up and answering questions because you have helped the board understand a little bit more. So we do appreciate that. Thank yes, sir. You. Thank you. If you want to leave now, you can. No, no. I'm, I'm <laughs> All right, thanks. So. What do we want to? What do we want to do? We want to just we want to just wait a couple of weeks. Let Mr. Fincham look at all the options, possibly considering Mr. Seely's concern, and say, wait, maybe we should do this. Um, we want to.
we'll send it back to the Planning Commission. We want to advertise for public hearing. Send it back to the Planning Commission. I mean, I don't think that yeah, will that's solve that's anything. Okay. I don't think that's going to, because it was a unanimous vote, and, and one of the right. members have sent us a letter saying, hey, please don't support this. Please don't yeah. pass this. Yeah. Uh, Understanding so options. Some of the options we, the option we eliminate option. early, but we right. still talk right. about them as options. Right. But I think the option is, uh, one of the options, what Mr. Uh, Emerson said we could do, is the fact that have asked staff to withdraw the, uh, the change, because they're the ones that initiated it. You have that option if you would like to pursue uh, I, I'm going to make a motion to that, that effect that we ask staff to withdraw uh, their change in the... Uh, but you want to you want to give you want to give them a couple of weeks to just see if there's any differences before you make that motion? You know, I don't see where it's going to... I don't see where it's going to benefit anyone other than people that's bringing it into Carolina County. That's the people that are going to benefit the most. Uh, Mr. Broaders has said that uh, they spread it the same day that they delivered to his farm. If it rains, then uh, they come back and uh, well, they dump spread it. it. They, well, they, they dump, dump it. come back and spread it. Yeah. yeah, but that's just the truckloads there. You're putting it over at another location. I just don't see the purpose of it. I think we open up a can of worms here that uh, we do not need to be opening up as far as biosolids. And you're right, Mr. Seeley. I remember the board had a policy <coughs> that no biosolids could be buried in Carolina County. Land. Period. Right Period. Here. And the state stepped in and said, hey, we don't care what you say. You've got to change it. Uh, and you've got to allow it. The same thing here. They very well may come in and say, I don't care what you say about the uh, Storage. storages. You're going to have to do it. But I let them tell me that in three or four years rather than open up the door now. That's my position. Okay. What do you want to do? My motion is that we ask staff to withdraw the uh, change by the silence. Is there a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any more discussion? Don't make a habit of it. Any, any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay? Nay. Okay, Mr. Black, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Seeley? Nay. Mr. Underwood? Aye. Mr. Akers? Aye. Mr. Taylor? Nay. I'm going to vote aye. So the motion to withdraw it passes four to two. All right, agenda item number eight. We're almost done on the home stretch here. Additional discussion of potential spending cuts in fiscal year 2014. Uh, Mr. Cully has put together a memo and I'm, I'm not sure we were as uh, firm as we should have been. I was looking for the right word, but it escapes. Anyhow, we had talked about some spending cuts in the miscellaneous section. Um, according to Mr. Cully's memo, as we were working the budget and revenues looked a little better, since we hadn't really confirmed it, he took it out. Nobody's wrong. We just want to make sure it's there. Um, we do have to also, at some point in time, talk about the social services position. That's not a cut. That's going to be an ad. Um, discussion on that, Mr. Black? Did you have, you have questions? I just wanted, I guess maybe it was a misunderstanding. I mean, when we were doing the budget cuts, we all went around the table, and we had the different budget cuts, and mine was the miscellaneous category of <coughs> cutting it in half. And um, I, I don't believe that has happened, so I, I, want to, I want to kind of make sure that that does happen. Even with the revenue projections, well, what's the, the additional revenue projections, Mr. Cully? Did you have that or surprise? <coughs> we, we put these in here. It's not really a miscellaneous category. What that was was we had gone through in that budget work session and highlighted what the major increases were. And so to, we had to get to the total number of what went up. And so that was everything else was that number that was about 157,000. It's now about 155,000. And that's a that's pretty much every other line item in the budget other than the ones we mentioned either went up or down, some stayed the same, whatever. So it's not a category that I can just take and say, I'm going to cut 75000 it's, it's a bunch of things. And, and so that's what we've put in this 
we put in this. We did not. We did not bring that back, and that's that is true. Once we once we balanced without the five cent tax increase, we didn't bring that list back to you, and, and I'm certainly sorry about that. And, but we had it. We had done it. We just didn't. Hey, we balanced. We brought that forward. And everybody seemed okay. Here's that list that's in your packet that makes up the 155,000 in additional things that are in the budget, other than maybe something that's up four or five bucks. I mean, you know, there's certain things that go up just a little bit. I mean, that's just line by line in the budget. So I didn't figure we had to draw some line. And, and Fran, help me here. Was it 200? What, what was your cutoff to make this list that's in the packet? $500. So unless it changed by, it had to change by $500 to make this list that's in the packet now. There's still other items that are up 300 or 200. But there are also items that are down 300 or 200. I guess my question is on the night that we were talking about that when it was there was an agreement on the on the table and I understand that the miscellaneous is a whole bunch of I mean it's not just one line item that says miscellaneous I understand that it's it's, it's hundreds probably correct? Um, correct there was no that, that night there was no denial saying that we could we could not do that oh no we're not denying right. it now okay no I'm, I'm right. not denying it now what we heard was we will come back to it and look at it that's what okay. we heard the chairman say we want to see what those items are we never brought you that list back that is true okay we, we didn't bring it back because we had balanced without needing those cuts. What okay. I'm telling you is here is that list. So okay. if, you, if you see things on here that you, I mean, the biggest thing on here is health insurance for part-time employees, <coughs> and that's Obamacare or mm -hmm. Affordable Care Act or whatever the official name is. We, we don't know what we're going to spend 73000 but that's an estimate that we may have to spend in 14 for right. part-time employees, mainly in the fire rescue service because they work a lot of overtime hours the way those shifts work. The chief could explain that way better than I can, but it's hard to avoid working uh, under 30. It doesn't work out to get under 30 hours a week because I think they work uh, 24 hours on at a time. So you can't, you work two days and you got 48 hours in a week. So we feel we need that insurance money. But I mean, there's other things in here right. that what certainly about the ones if you that want to cut. That's Those are, neg those are negative numbers. We didn't spend that money? No, they're ne they've gone down. FY13 to FY14. So we're spending less money. Okay. We so we had money to pay this radio consultant because we, we didn't spend it last go round. No, we yeah, but see when we put this together, we spent that since we put this together. We just want to um, we want to make sure all the board members had a chance to make sure they understand what's there. Mr. Seeley, did you have a, or are you just going through it? I'm just looking at one more thing after talking to Mr. Blair. Well, this is for our budget next fiscal year, which starts July 1. July 1. Mrs. Hatcher has already said there will be budget amendments in June. Okay. We do need to bring back on the 28th the school budget for appropriation. Right. So we, if you would, if you know what cuts that you want out of this, we can fix all that up and amend the budget. Can, can you know, we've talked about the George Washington Regional Commission, and I think that was one that everybody agreed that we needed to, to fund this as best we could. So <coughs> can you recommend, <coughs> excuse me, can you recommend or tell us what areas you feel we can cut in? Why don't, and that's, make yeah, I think that's that's what we ought to have him do. Maybe yeah. not interactively right now, but bring that back on, yeah. the, on the 28th and say, this is what the board said we were going to cut, we stopped, and these are the things of that list that you recommend. And then we can decide as to do we want to make the whole 7,000 or right. something in between. Yeah, and then we then we we give you confirmation, and, and then that makes sure that, that you are moving at the board's direction. If anything goes wrong, it's our fault. So nobody's wrong. We just want to make sure we follow through on all the things we said we we're going to follow through. And we're definitely not going to eliminate this public officials liability insurance. So anything else? We're going to move on from there. All right. We'll look. At, we'll look. At, we'll cut his mic off. Yeah, it is. We'll look at the rest of the stuff on the 28th. 
That's good? Okay. And that will give you a chance to talk to individual board members if they want to talk to you about it. We're good. We're good. Order if you're up. You adopt your budget by department. This right. is over various different departments. You have the meeting on the 28th. You have one meeting in June. Right. So you have to adopt it by June. Okay. We were going to do it on 28th. But I'm not. At, I need direction of which ones we're doing, unless you're leaving that up to us. No, so that's I can what, give you the that's rest what we're going to give you on the 28th. And we'll come back at the and then you come back in the June meeting and say, okay. based on your last minute changes, here's what we have. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's probably going to be a little bit. All right. So the last thing we have is um, information calendar items, Mr. Cully. And closing board comments. We have uh, um, Thursday night. Don't forget the IDA um, business well, appreciation Thursday. this Thursday, and it's at a new location, the Meadow event um, in the uh, I think in the mansion, but I'm not positive. That. I think right that's right? where it was. That's where I was going. So I, thought I could that's be wrong, but anyway, <laughs> I know it's that Meadow event. So hopefully not in a stable. Isn't it says Meadow Farm? Oh, I got Meadow Farm. Okay. All right. That's Thursday. Relay for life at six. It's, yeah, Thursday, six to eight. Okay. Relay for life. And it's the Saturday, and that's at the fairground. Okay. What time does that start? Ten. Yeah, ten o'clock. Ten, ten to ten. Fairgrounds. Fairgrounds. County fairgrounds. County, 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 county fairgrounds. Okay. You going? No, that's Saturday. Saturday. You going? You survivor. You going? I think me, at least me and say, because I, I think Mr. Teeley, you are already a uh, sponsor or something. Uh, yeah, but I won't be there. I will be in Richmond Saturday. Okay. Anish Chopra, he's a Democrat. I don't think Mr. Teeley, well, he might be looking for him. <laughs> I, actually talk to, I actually used to talk to him a lot when he was a state CIO. All right, anything else, Mr. Kelly? Because we're no, sir, kind Mr. of uh, we're losing our audience here. That's it. And I mean the board. Mr. Black, closing board comments. Yeah, I just, uh, I did this last year as well. I just want to, uh, it's, it's for the, uh, kind of out to the school system. It's a uh, time of year where the kids are uh, in the schools and they're taking SOLs and AP exams and stuff like that. So I just want to uh, wish the kids in Caroline County good luck on all their tests. That's it. Thank you, sir. Mr. Seeley? Mr. Chairman, I left the opening board comments to the end. I just want to tell you what a great job I thought you did on TV with the sheriff. I think it, it really made the county look responsible and, and understood the problem and understood where we could and couldn't go. And I want to thank you and the sheriff for the great job you did at the, at the, um, at the uh, news conference. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Underwood? Um, my only comment, Mr. Chairman, is that it's certainly you know, easy to make recommendations and, you know, make comments about what people should or shouldn't do. Um, but there's, unfortunately, there's just as many comments for as there are against. There are just many, as many opinions that have merit that don't have merit. Fortunately for, I think for the citizens of Caroline County, I think, the way the, the government is set up, we listen to it all, and we take all of those uh, into consideration. Again, this United States is um, a nation of laws, and I think we have to abide by those laws no matter how much we, we dislike it. And if we dislike those things, then there's a process for us to make changes, and that's what we do. And we will continue to do what's best and, and ensure that we follow the laws of Caroline, of the Commonwealth of Virginia, as well as those state and federal laws. So I listen to comments. I take them for the merit that they have, and we'll continue to do the best we can. 
You Mr. Underwood, Mr. Akers? No, sir. Mr. Taylor? Uh, just one. Um, I will not be able to attend the business dinner on Thursday as uh, my wife's uncle passed away and I have to go to Philadelphia, so I just want the business community to know why I was not able to uh, be there for the dinner on Thursday. That's all I have. Well, you of course have the sympathy of the board. Uh, yeah. Express that to your wife for us. Um, so my uh, closing board comments is we still have an issue with the social services positions that, that we were requested by the director. Uh, Ms. Celia, I know you were working on that. We'll need to look at that. We only have two meetings left before the budget starts. I think that was a fairly large number, like $150,000. So we need to look at that to see where we are in the budget process uh, or budget funding. If we can fund that, we can fund one, two, whatever it is. But we do need to have that on our agenda before. Um, and the last thing is uh, I have actually tried to talk to a lot of people about this uh, Boston bomber burial issue. Um, some people I didn't want to talk to or some people that volunteered their conversation to me. But I actually reached out to Reverend uh, Upshaw, who is Concord Baptist Church in the Reedy Church District. Um, he had actually just been talking to Reverend Dwayne Field who was in, in the Reedy Church District. Um, with them and, and some other folks, they thought we should use this whole thing as a teachable moment to make sure we bring the county together, to make sure we talk more to our neighbors. So I'm going to ask Mr. Cully if you would follow up with them. Um, I actually talked to Reverend Upshaw. So we will try to give whatever county resources we can to a round table where if people need to come and talk, uh, vent a little, but, but make it positive. And I understand we have to, we have to sometimes express our feelings before the, uh, the healing really begins. If we need to do that, then we will um, try to look at something for the end of next week, like Thursday or Friday with them. See if you can get maybe this building or maybe a conference room. And I'll be here um, if I need to be. I will ask any other board members if they want to be. Um, but we're, it's really just for the community to start moving forward. And then we'll go, we'll, we'll go ahead. Everything in life should be a teachable moment because this really says more about us than anybody else. What do we do now? So we're going to do what we're supposed to do because we're Virginians. We started this place. All right. Anything else? Closing board comments? We're done. Let's go home. Motion to adjourn would be in order. Go move. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Peace.